How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today we're talking about this stuff right here, glycerin. It is commonly used in the home distilling community world to smooth spirits. But does it work? Can people perceive a difference in the spirits that have glycerin? And if they can perceive a difference, do they prefer it? Welcome Distiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if you're into geeky stuff like this, if you want to know whether little things improve your spirits, this is the channel for you. Stick around, subscribe, ring the notification bell and don't miss anything. Alright team, last week I did a talk about smoothness in whiskey, uh, how you can accomplish that and whether or not it's a good thing. A bunch of people told me that they wanted me to do some blind testing on glycerin because it came up in discussion. Honestly guys, I have shied away from using it. I've tested it a couple of times. I've always been a little bit against it and I've always felt like, yes, it will smooth a spirit out, whether it be whiskey or anything else, but I also get this taste in it, this flavor in it that I don't think I like. I find it hard to describe exactly what that flavor is, but it is it's kind of a fake honey flavor, a fake honeysuckle flavor, I guess, something that's a little bit estery and just something not quite right about it, and a, a touch sour, I guess, a little bit sour. I find it really hard to describe, but it's just something doesn't quite sit right with me with it. <laughs> But I have thought for a long time, a long time, that there's a really high chance that I'm just really biased against it, that for whatever reason I've decided that it's cheating, that it's fake, that it is too easy, whatever, and that that's embedded in my mind and the negative aspects I'm getting from it are biased against it. So I wanted to set up a little test to find out whether or not people can even perceive a difference with a spirit that's been dosed with this stuff at the prescribed rate and then if they can what their preferences are one way or the other. So I want to get onto that in a little bit but before we get there let's have a talk specifically about how this stuff's used. Mixing instructions literally say shake well before use for standard spirits add five milliliters per liter of spirit. Okay so that's five mils per one liter of spirits uh, all you do is mix it in, shake it up, and Bob's your uncle. Now what does this supposedly do? It smooths it. <laughs> and, whoo, if you missed last week's video, maybe go back and watch that, because what the Sam Hill is smoothness, yeah, it can mean a whole lot of different things to different people, and I think that's a, kind of the problem with the word, that people talk past each other when using it, and it's not descriptive in any way, shape, or form. But, for the purposes of this video, I am going to talk about alcohol burn essentially and, and I think when people are using this stuff and talking about smoothness that's mostly what they're talking about. How do the people that sell it to you say it works? How do the people that uh, back it up and, and like to use it, what do they say about it? Uh, essentially it is extremely viscous. If I turn this upside down it's going to take a good you know five or six seconds for the little bubble in the top of the the cap to get to the other side of the bottle so it is really viscous. It adds a physical syrupy, syrupiness to the spirit and although that's not and while that's not obviously maybe perceptible immediately at, at five mils in a thousand mils it is it is super super thick so I can definitely uh, guess that perhaps that does actually take effect it is also sweet I just tasted it it is sweet it's not crazy sweet but it is sweet and more often than not once again if you go back to last week's video I think that adding sweetness to a spirit improves uh, the impression of sweetness. Yeah. In my experience, different fractions of people in the home distilling community are more likely to use it than others, and generally those are the people that lean towards the the still spirits T500, make a neutral wash, and then flavor it with something later on, which is totally fine. I've got nothing against that. Just just to get that out there, guys, I've got no problem with it whatsoever. And any of this stuff is 100% about personal preference. But in saying that, people like that are more likely to use it. That's not really my scene. That's part of the reason that I was worried that perhaps I was just being biased against it and taking something that's a great ingredient off the table for no other reason that I thought I didn't like it, you know? So if you do want to, so if you do want to use it, guys, you can buy it all over the place. You can buy it branded for distilling um, still spirits. You can buy it 
for a bunch of other things as well too. I'm not even going to bother giving you links team, just, just Google it. But what I would suggest is getting a really nice little syringe like this. So this syringe is one mil. <laughs> because it's such a small dose, five mils in a litre, the difference between five mils and seven mils, that's huge. You're double dosing if you miss by five mils, that's, that's pretty crazy. So I do suggest getting hold of these little syringes and honestly team, having an array of syringes from, you know, 1, 5, 10, 20, 100 mils for distilling, absolute gold. Literally all you do is measure out the, the desired dose based on the volume you have and if you want to put more or less based on your own personal preference, be my guest by all means. Measure it out, pop the lid on the spirit you're wanting to dose, pop it in. Pretty much done. <laughs> I would suggest, I would suggest that even after giving it a shake, leaving it for a day or two is going to let it more properly mix together and homogenize, kind of like proofing a spirit down as well. So doing that, dosing a bottle like this, this bottle literally says that it is to improve smoothness. Those are the words that it uses. I'm asserting or guessing that what it's meaning once again is the alcohol burn is reduced and I can understand that. The flip side to that, the argument against it is one, dear God, I hate the N word, the natural word. I don't like it at all, but it's not natural is one of the things. I think that's a totally meaningless word, but I understand what it means in this context, right? It's cheating, just not right. <laughs> and if you make a proper neutral spirit, you don't need it to be any smoother. It's smooth enough as it is. So these are all the arguments against it. So after last week's video, I pretty much went out and set this up straight away. I got two identical bottles. These are 500 ml bottles. I filled them up to 500 mils exactly each with exactly the same spirit in both bottles. Now what I used for this experiment was kind of a crappy vodka. And the reason I did that is because it's relatively neutral. So we're not going to get a whole lot of other things cramming in on top of this to compete for people's attention and sort of mask the issue as to what's going on here. I wanted to make it nice and easy for people to be able to pick out the difference between the two. And I figured that going for a neutral was probably the easiest way to do this. Why did I go for a crappy vodka? The reason I did that is that I wanted there to be roughness and burn. I wanted there to be a platform for pr improvement to be made on it, right? If I took the best vodka in the world and tried to make it smoother, uh, that's somewhat pointless. The other reason, honestly guys, is quite often I, I get the feeling that this stuff is used as a crutch. I think that it's used to, to help save something that's not so great. So I wanted to start with something that's not so great, put it in the same sort of situation where it's often, often used and move from there. Once again, guys, I'm not trying to insult anyone if you use this stuff on the regular. I'm not saying this stuff's crap. All right, so because they're 500 ml bottles, I dosed one of the bottles with 2.5 mils of this stuff, which is uh, the exact dosage on the bottle, shook it up and left it overnight. So now we've got two bottles that are identical in every way. One has been dosed with the glycerin, one has not. Someone did point out to me that I probably should have dosed the other bottle with 2.5 mils of water. Probably should have technically. I, whether it actually makes a difference, probably not, but to be fair, uh, I didn't do that. Now, in saying that, there's a whole lot of holes scientifically in this test. Feel free to discuss those down below because if you guys like this sort of content and you want more of it, let me know. And I want the discussion around uh, improving the science to, to rage down in the comments so we can get this right and do it properly going forward. But anyway, so then what I did is poured one sample into two glasses and this was randomized. So sometimes it was the two outside ones, sometimes it was the two left ones, sometimes it was the two right ones, that sort of thing. And the other sample into the remaining glass. Now I've done a poor job of that this time around, but the idea is once again to make everything here look identical as possible. So the same identical glasses, the same pour level. The idea is to create a situation where the only thing the person can choose is the presence or lack of presence of glycerin. So these were placed in front of the test subject like so. So these are the words that I used to tell people. I tried to keep it uh, the same all the time. There's no good, there's no bad. All I need you to do is find the one glass that's different. Two are the same, one is different. Tell me which glass is different. So then the person could go through each glass, test them, taste them, sniff them, put them in their eyeball for all I care, it doesn't matter. It's up to them to see if they can perceive a dif difference between them and then pull the odd glass out. 
Once they made their mind up, I asked them to indicate which glass they thought was different, the three or the two or the one. Once again, that should be different, but... And once that was done, once that answer was recorded, there's no bank going back on that from there on in. But I asked them after that what their perception was, whether they had a preference for one or the other, and if they did have a preference for one or the other, what they thought the differences between the two were and all those sort of things as well. All of that data was recorded, and I did this for... 19 times but three of those were me messing around i discounted those and took them right out of the picture because i know what's going on that is not blind at all let alone double blind if they were all water if there was no difference between the three and people were just randomly guessing which they thought the odd one out was statistically and i know this is a tiny sample size guys i get it statistically you would expect just over five people on average to be able to choose that but 12 people selected the odd one out correctly out of 16 so based on those numbers 12 out of 16 getting this correct when random chance would be 5.333 out of 16 getting it correct i'm pretty confident saying that yes this suggests that there is a significant and perceptible difference between dosing or not dosing a b-grade average crappy vodka with glycerin at the recommended levels uh, prescribed on this bottle. Honestly guys, that is all I can really assert or claim from this test. Let's put a stick in the sand and say that that's what I'm asserting this little experiment says, that it would suggest that there's a perceivable difference between dosing and not dosing. That's all I can actually say. So let's cross that stick in the sand and start to look into a few more things that I might be able to glean from what's going on here. The first thing that was super, super, super interesting to me is the more a person enjoyed spirits, the more a person was into spirits, and the more a person had experience with assessing subjective things like this. I had a, beer, a BJCP beer judge do this. I had a couple of sort of spirits aficionados uh, do this little test for me. Those people were much less quick to guess the right one out and actually disproportionately were incorrect as well <laughs> which is super interesting to me and i thought about this for a long time and and tell me what you think of this but this is what my guess is people that don't drink spirits people that don't enjoy spirits people that drink spirits to drink or you know mix it with coke or whatever and once again there's nothing wrong with that but if that's what you do, really the only measure of good for a vodka is Bernie, not Bernie. So when they go into trying this, they've got Bernie, not Bernie in their head, and maybe a little bit about it tastes good, it tastes bad. Oh, yeah, they're not that great, but that one's less Bernie. That was, that was the the uh the extent of the interrogation of the sample right which is fine that's exactly what i wanted whereas the people that were into spirits the people that like assessing things like this and the beer judge they'd go along and sniff each one first maybe go back and sniff the first one again and this one hmm and then do, do you get my point <laughs> So not only are they taking more time, they're approaching it from a, a whole other aspect. They've got like 50 different things going on in their head in terms of flavours, mouthfeel, acidity, astringency, flavour. Is this one a little bit more wheaty than that one? This one tastes a little bit like licorice. Is there licorice in the other one? Let me go back to the other. You get my point? <laughs> so that was really interesting and that was really just me observing these people taking the test. Going one step past that, anyone that took the test and failed... I discarded their answers from here on in. Everyone that got it correct, I kept those answers and I tried to put them together. So preference, which do you prefer? This was split pretty close down the middle, guys. It was split five to four in favor of the glycerin being preferred uh, with the remaining people, uh, what's that, nine, three. The remaining three people saying that they don't have a preference either way. And once again, I kind of noticed that the people that are more into spirit preferred the non-glycerin version. The people on this side, the people that preferred the glycerin, um, basically remarked that it was smoother, it was easier to drink, it was more approachable. 
less jaggy, less hardcore, words like that is what describe people in this camp. People over here that preferred the non-glycerin version said things like it was the glycerin version was subdued, it was flat, there was something missing from it, it was less interesting, which I found super, super telling in my own little personal way. So take from that what you wish. Once again, I can't really assert anything from that, that was just my own personal observations and by no means based on uh, hard and fast numbers. Does that make sense? My very favourite comment out of all of them though was once again from my wife. This is becoming a running thing. I think we need to have a, an Erin Review Spirits <laughs> section at some point in time. Uh, rotten Lemonade. And then she clarified by saying, not real lemonade, 7up. Alright guys, I would love to hear your comments on this down below. First of all, I want to know if you like this sort of content and you want to see more of it. Uh, I started with an easy variable that's something pretty easy just to add into a bottle. But there's a whole lot of things we could test going forward. I would also like to know what your thoughts are on glycerin and whether you think that this little thing here sort of supports or negates what your assumptions were beforehand, whether you think that this sort of thing uh, would change your mind at all. And I would love for some more people out there to, to do exactly the same test, to set it up, to try it a few times and see what their results are. So, a huge thank you to the Patreon guys. There's no way I get to do this stuff. There's no way I get to play around with spirits uh, and make these videos without the Patreons. If you're finding value in these videos, if you're really enjoying them and you want to contribute back to the channel, you can go over to Patreon, have a look around, see if it's correct for you. The subscription comes pretty much directly back to the channel and helps keep the lights on here. And in return, you get a little bit of behind the scenes content, a little bit more of a peek behind the curtain, if you will, and a few little rewards as well. This has been an absolute blast for me, guys. When I did test it on myself, I really don't think that I can perceive that sweet flavour. I don't think I can really get that anymore. I think that was in my head, to be perfectly honest with you. And if I can't taste it in the vodka, I really don't think I'm going to be able to taste it in a bourbon or something like that. I do think, I do think that the comments of flatness, of subdued flavour, of basically taking the life out of the spirit in some ways, I do think potentially that does have something to stand on. Once again, I'd love to hear your thoughts, guys. All right, guys, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and please drop a comment in the comments down below. I want to know if you want more content like this, so let me know, guys. If you really liked the video and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do so as well so you don't miss anything. Until next time, guys, keep on chasing the craft. I'll see you then. See ya.